Well, hello, folks, and welcome to the Dieter Melhorn Fishing Podcast. Hope you're having a good day, whatever day it is that you happen to be listening to the show. Today, we're going to talk about how to cheat in a fishing tournament. Yes, it's a timely subject. Uh, I'm going to go over what's been going on, if you've missed it, uh, and what goes on out there, and really, honestly, how we can stop it. But first, I want to thank everybody who's a regular viewer, uh, regular listener to the podcast. This is a video version also. It will be on YouTube. So uh, if you're listening to the audio version of the podcast, you can check it out on YouTube. Obviously, if you're here on YouTube, I've got a video or uh, audio version of this podcast, Dieter Melhorn Fishing. It's available on all the popular formats that are out there. So go check it out, and as always, you guys here on YouTube can leave comments in the section below. I'd love to get your feedback on this. You guys that are listening to the podcast, uh, there's not really a good way to leave comments, so go to my website. You can shoot me a message. Uh, there's a section there on my website, DieterMelhornFishing.com, where you can contact me, uh, send me a message, let me know what you think on all this stuff. But anyway, if you've been under a rock uh, for the past three days, you have probably not heard about this scandal in this fishing tournament. The rest of the world has heard about it. And I say the world because this is a major, major deal. Uh, social media blew it up is what it comes down to. Um, it, it's been on CNN. It's been on NPR of all things. NPR has actually covered this. Uh, TMZ has talked about it. The New York Times has talked about it. And what it is for those of you, those four people out there who have not heard about this, um, there was a fishing tournament, a walleye fishing tournament, kind of out of my wheelhouse, out of my area. We really don't play that game around here, but big money tournament. And let me tell you, folks. Um, I've learned a lot uh, about the fishing, drifting, and trolling that I do from watching walleye tournaments. Uh, it's a big money sport. Uh, there is a lot of money exchanged hands, and we'll get into that in a minute with these guys that we're getting ready to talk about. Um, what happened was some guys got busted in a walleye tournament uh, this past week. This was all called on videotape. All you got to do is just go do some Googling, type in walleye cheaters and this video will show up it's everywhere if you're on facebook it's been in your feed um it's uh it's a big deal multiple cameras called it multiple cameras seen what happened basically what happened at this tournament they were allowed to weigh in five fish uh as i guess most of these walleye tournaments are one of the things with a walleye tournament they can weigh in dead fish we'll get to that in a minute uh on what that means in all of this and I had some people reach out to me from that area that I spoke with and uh, that are into walleye fishing. They're up in that part of the country where they're at. And they told me that generally in one of these tournaments, these fish are basically cookie cutter sized fish, four and a half pounds or so, uh, maybe some five pounders. But because of the time of the year and what's going on, I don't know a whole lot about that. But they said basically all these fish are in that weight range and it comes down to ounces that separates the winners from second place and third place. And anyway, these guys come to the scale and they have a big bag of fish. Well, the fish look like all the other fish are basically about the same size. Uh, they need, they were trying to get to, and I've got some weights written down here. The weight they needed to beat was 28 pounds. So they needed to come in with, you know, more weight than that to win. Uh, 28 pounds, pretty good weight. Most of the weights, from what I'm understanding from people that were there in this tournament, were in the mid-20s. Uh, so they needed more than that. Well, they did it. Uh, they didn't win it by 28 and a half pounds, 29 pounds, or 30 pounds. They had almost 34 pounds of fish. Now, the while that's possible, while I get that big, you can catch walleye that are that big. This time of the year, under these conditions... Uh, there had been some weather stuff that had happened. It was just not happening. And we got a lot of anglers fishing this tournament. I think there were like 70 different teams uh, paying about 400 bucks a piece to finish uh, fishing this tournament. So the, 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 the weight was a little bit odd, uh, especially when you have that many people stacked on top of each other that have this one weird anomaly. The other thing, and we'll go into more detail on this too, was the fish looked like all the other fish that had been caught. And when I say looked like, they looked similar in size. 
And that was the thing that tipped off the officials that something may be up. Now, they had some other clues that we'll talk about that kind of was had them looking at these guys. But anybody who fishes a lot, whether it be bass fishing, fishing for catfish, fishing for stripers, when you catch hundreds of fish, uh, especially if you're working the scales and weighing them in as a weighmaster, when these fish come in, you can... You can guess pretty closely uh, the, on the weight and the size of them. Uh, you know, you, you pull up, you know, bass tournaments are notorious for having a lot of cookie cutter size fish. You can kind of tell, you know, by looking at the size of the fish. Oh, that's two pounds. That's two and a half. You know, usually you're within a half a pound. Uh, but obviously these fish were, you know, solidly a pound, pound and a half bigger, close to two pounds bigger than what they should have been. That was the real alarm bell that led to what happens next. The other thing uh, was these guys had been under some scrutiny. Um, they the These two anglers um, had a phenomenal performance, I guess you would say, over the past couple of years. Uh, winning close to $300,000. I think there may have been some boats that were won. Uh, they had a phenomenal um, a track record of winning. They passed a lot of polygraph tests in that series of wins. Now, there was one interesting polygraph that they failed last year. Uh, there was a tournament. It's kind of done a little different to where it's run over, I don't know, a month, two month period, and you could weigh in fish during that time period. From what I understand, there were two tournaments going on at the same time. So basically, you could enter one, enter the other one, catch a fish, weigh it in that one, and weigh it in the other. My understanding is that's what they did. The interesting thing about that is the fish was big. It weighed a lot. They were going to win both of those tournaments that were running concurrently. The interesting thing was they passed one lie detector test, and they failed another one. So they were declared the winner in one. And they had to forfeit the winnings in the other. We'll get to that in a minute. Again, this is a complicated story with a lot of wheels, so stick with me on this. Uh, fast forward back to this most recent tournament. Uh, what happened here was the Waymaster knew something was up. He knew something was up with the length of the fish and the weight. So uh, he held on to the guys for a second and said, hey, we're going to get some pictures. He pulled the fish out of the bag felt them, felt their stomachs, and not unlike catfish that have muscles in their bellies, he felt something hard in the stomach. The difference was walleyes don't eat muscles like catfish do, and they're not eating muscles that are the size of eggs, even if they would. So he knew something was up. He got a knife from somebody, cut the belly of the fish open, and inside he found some large lead weights. Now, this was not just you know, an anomaly to where this fish, for whatever reason, ate this weight. It was in several of the fish, several weights in each fish in multiple fish that were in the angler's krill. So, obviously, this is what the video shows. It shows all of this that, you know, the, the chaos that ensued. Uh, the guys were actually escorted out by police, mainly for, um, you know, uh, fear of, you know, an assault on them. The crowd was not happy to say the least, and understandably so. But the uh, waymaster, the guy running the tournament, did actually a good job keeping the crowd kind of calm because honestly, that's the last thing you want to do is turn it into a brawl in a situation like this because that's not good for anybody in the angling community. But back to some of more of this backstory. Um, again, they had passed polygraph tests before. Uh, there, there was a lot of question about whether they were fishing legally. And quite honestly, at this point, nobody will ever know that unless they confess up to it. What's went on in the past and what has happened, uh, we'll know the, never know the answer whether those fish were legally caught, uh, whether weights were added to, or, you know, what really happened in those situations. Now, you may be wondering about the polygraph that I talked about a second ago. It's one of the things I want to come back to. Uh, a lot of tournaments, for you guys that don't fish tournaments, uh, will require a polygraph test for either the winner or a random selected somebody who is in the money or both or, you know, some combination thereof. A lot of these polygraph tests that are done now are voice stress analysis. Uh, to most experts in the field, 
They say it is not quite as reliable as one of the more extensive polygraph tests. Uh, but the, the whole point in all, uh, all that is, is that there are some variables. And honestly, a, a sociopathic liar probably is not going to show up on a lie detector test because honestly, somebody without any conscience and worry about that, you know, probably can get by with it. Um, the other thing is, a lot of it comes down to what they ask on these lie detector tests. Uh, you know, if you ask them a question, let's say the question is, did you violate any state laws uh, while fishing? Sometimes that's a question that they'll ask. Well, I don't know. Stuffing weights into a walleye's mouth may not be a violation of law. It may be a violation of, you know, tournament rules. You know, I don't know. I don't know what the tournament rules in this situation. But, you know, if there's nothing written into the rules that specify that even if they ask you about whether you were violating the rules that question may have not been in there uh, my point being is sometimes you can get away with these uh, passing these tests depending on what the wording of the questions are in the test the other thing like i said earlier there are some people when you get to the path of being or to the point of being a just sociopathic liar uh, with no conscience uh, you don't really get tripped up by that oh no they got me kind of question that they throw in there so the fact that they passed them it shows you for any of you guys that fish tournaments while it's a good uh it's a great thing for honest people uh we've always said this uh, a crook a liar and a thief is not really going to care about it that much the other thing i was going to go back to that i was talking about earlier is they allow dead fish to be weighed in and that's something from the catfish world uh one thing i give the catfish community a lot of credit for is the live weigh-ins uh that's something that has spilled over from bass fishing it's a good thing uh i'm all for it uh i think that's a good way to go uh you know it's hard to keep you know a lot of fish alive especially in some of these bigger creels while i i don't know enough about them to know exactly how hard they are to keep alive my understanding is this is a common practice uh in walleye fishing uh that you know it's not a live release kind of deal um you know these fish from what some guys were telling me like i said i don't fish for these fish that this time of the year they're catching them out of 40 50 60 70 feet of water uh so bringing fish up out of those depths you know that has another stress effect on one of these things you're alive i say all that to say there's a little more accountability when you have live fish uh not that you can't cheat with live fish we'll get to that in a minute too but it's a lot easier on several levels to cheat when you're allowed to bring in dead fish uh, first and foremost you could catch the fish yesterday or the day before and use it in that tournament if you have a way to work it into your weight so get it onto the boat uh, obviously these guys had to be operating in cahoots i would think maybe they weren't maybe one partner knew the other one didn't i don't know but it's a lot easier when you can bring in a dead fish to weigh in so that's one thing where you know now i let me say this in big fish tournaments, and I'm talking big fish, marlin, sharks, that kind of stuff, uh, it's a little bit harder. It doesn't really matter in those kind of tournaments if you bring them in dead because generally speaking, uh, it's not like you can cart around a dead marlin for two or three days and try to hide it and do something with it. But in these type of tournaments, one of the reasons live fish weigh-ins were kind of mandated and made the way they are with bass fishing and fishing for catfish um, is because of this it makes cheating a lot more difficult not impossible obviously but a lot more difficult some fish are hard to keep alive striper fishing uh, that's why you see so few striper tournaments anymore uh, it's hard to keep them alive people like to release them they like to support releasing uh, these trophy fish it's virtually impossible to do that with a large striper so uh kudos to the tournaments that still keep them alive that's one of the issues uh with you know dead fish weigh-ins now this stuffing weights into fish's mouths is nothing new these are not the first people to do this by far this has been going on for a long time a long time uh and it goes on continuously um i did a story uh years ago when espn owned bass and they had some bass fishing shows on espn there was an angler tony christensen from down in georgia who was caught i believe in a flw uh, tournament stuffing weights and we did a, actually shot a story with him he kind of 
came clean on what happened and why he did it and, you know, that type thing. And, and you know, most of these guys, um, it's more of an ego thing of wanting to be a winner than it is to do with getting the money and making the money. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's that wanting to be on top, hold up that trophy, be the guy, because most of these guys that are fishing these tournaments don't need the money. Um, these tournaments are not cheap to get into. The boats and equipment that they run to fish these tournaments is not cheap. Guys are not running around in John boats in these deals. This is nothing but a bragging rights deal more than anything. So you're probably asking yourself, how widespread is the cheating going on out there in different fishing tournaments? Does it happen in catfish tournaments? A lot of people that watch this channel, listen to this podcast, Fish for Catfish. Some of you fish tournaments. The majority of the people that watch this channel and check it out do not fish tournaments. But it happens. I, I would be naive to sit here and say that people are not cheating how do they cheat in a live fish weigh-in tournament well you stuff fish in the basket somewhere you catch them or have somebody else catch them uh during the tournament you go to that location somebody comes to you they hand fish off to you and it happens that way um like i said i i would be naive to say people are not cheating and not doing that um is there it's a better way than you know Dead fish, because I think it makes it so much easier. People aren't stuffing weights into a catfish's mouth to uh, add weight to it. You need a bigger fish, plain and simple. You can't stuff enough weight into a catfish's mouth in most of, most of these tournaments to make that much of a difference. Not to mention, again, this whole thing with the length of the fish, the size of the fish, you got a pretty idea of how much it's going to weigh in that weight range. There was a tournament uh, last year, I believe last fall, Santee Cooper. Guy comes to the scale with these fish, and I think they messed up. And this was an error on the part of the people who were weighing the fish. And they said the fish was, I don't remember what the weight was, 80-some pounds or something. And then they had these other fish that were halfway close to it, but the weight didn't make sense with what the total was. Anybody, all of us out there watching it, knew good and well something was weird with all this weigh-in. They ended up correcting it. They ended up making up for it, but... A lot of times, most savvy anglers, most people in these tournaments have an idea, basically, of where those weights should be for these fish. So, yeah, in a live fish weigh-in like a catfish tournament, it's going to be people handing off fish. This happens in bass tournaments. I've actually seen that happen out on the lake when I was out there fishing for catfish. I've seen some guys hand off some fish. That's what was going on in that situation. Um, is there a way to avoid it? Yes, there is. There's a way that I think would help greatly with reducing the cheating that is going on. Um, and it, it's what I've been saying for a long time. We need to change the format of the way we do tournaments. We're using an antiquated way of doing every fishing tournament out there, short of a couple, uh, that just does not utilize technology. And I think all this stuff that, and you really think about it, you know, you, you turn these guys loose, you don't see them for eight hours, and then you come back and trust that what they caught, they actually caught during that time period. It's basically with a wink and a nod and a handshake that all this has happened. And, you know, it's prime for cheating. Nobody is there to watch it. We've got cell phones. You know, we've got GoPro cameras. I've got GoPro cameras laying on my desk. There should be a way to utilize this technology to account for what is going out there on out there in those tournaments when people are catching fish. Again, it's complicated. Yes, it will cost money. But for what people are paying in, uh, you know, $75,000, $80,000 boats, a $400 GoPro camera to document what's going on and prove that you actually caught the fish, I don't think it's going to break the bank, not to mention what they're paying to enter some of these fishing tournaments. So, yes, there are ways to fix this. My loss of hope there is i don't think the tournament directors want to do it i don't think most tournament directors give a crap about doing that uh they're more about putting on the tournaments uh kind of listening to what everybody is saying because listen anglers don't want to do that they're going to be you know you're going to be worried about you know uh doing it right doing it wrong uh not want to spend the money to do it not giving up their secret spot on where they're catching fish a lot of reasons not to do it but I don't know what the solution is, but if you ever want to help eliminate cheating, I think using technology in some level, some way, shape, or form uh, will help to do that. And I think that's, you know, like I've been saying for a long time, 
that's where our sport needs to evolve to, especially in the catfish world. Uh, you know, I think these tournaments need to evolve to a different level. Bringing in five fish, bringing in five dead fish. I think it's an antiquated format that is just, you know, ripe for this stuff to happen, especially with the dead fish. Uh, the dead fish is just, that's, you're, you're just waiting on the next person to cheat in a situation like that. And there's not a whole lot you can do about it. But I do think you lie in technology utilizing people in the boat who are observers uh, require them to film the fish they're catching. I think all of that may go to help curb some of this. So anyway, that's kind of my take on all of this. Uh, I talked to a lot of people about this and I think all you guys I talked to was actually going to pull somebody, one of them, two of them in here and talk to them, maybe do it with some multiple people. But uh, to be quite honest, uh, there were so many of these ideas and ways that people cheat and do this stuff. Uh, I, I was just sitting there laughing about it. I said, man, everybody knows all this how all this stuff happens. They're going to think you're cheating. So I decided to just throw it out there myself because obviously my track record with fishing tournaments isn't a good I would be a bad cheater because I didn't win enough of them to uh, actually be good at it. So, But it's something to think about. It's a shame this happened. But in another way of looking at it, it's kind of good that some of this stuff got out there just to reiterate, expose, and show people that it does happen. You can keep an eye out for it. And hopefully the tournament directors, the people who are running these tournaments, will, you know, step up and take some measures to, you know, stop it. Uh, you know, it, it could be as something simple on these smaller tournaments as having a metal detector to determine, you know, whether there's, you know, anything inside of the fish. It's crazy you have to do that, but it may be something that they need to step up and go to to, you know, try to cure some of these problems. So anyway, that's it for now. Those of you that hadn't seen any of this, go check out the videos. Everybody else, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you out on the water.